I'm joined now by Dr. James Holly Jr. of the University of Michigan. Dr. Holly, thank you so much for joining us today. You're welcome. Thank you for having me. First, I wanted to uplift the words of Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. and how he so eloquently captures the problem of shallow understanding, which I think is common in engineering education. Uh, you have people who claim that they want to do good things and address some of the larger issues, but they just don't understand them enough. And so they become barriers to actually accomplishing change, uh, more so than those that we know to be, that don't care, um, that are, you know, nonchalant, indifferent, and things like that. How do you describe the racial inequity in engineering and how shallow understanding affects that inequity you just mentioned? Well, I've actually been shifting to talking more about racial iniquity. Um, and, and that's one of the points I'm gonna make is like, it's not just that there are differences in the resources that people are getting, but like there's these sinister dynamics around how black people are treated and how other non-white people are treated. And so one of those are just who can be a knowledge contributor, who can participate in the classroom and how those contributions are accepted. And so shallow understanding would say, you know, something like we, you know, underrepresentation. we don't have enough black students um, but when we talk about what's enough, it's usually some number that's based upon the oppression that we've experienced as opposed to what will be you know, holistic and, and transformational, right? How do we qualitatively instead of quantitatively help students succeed? And it sounds like this issue with the shallow understanding is that it's not discussed enough. Why is that? Typically, the, dis the discussion is around, did I try to do this? Did I intentionally, intent did I want to have this problematic outcome? or I was trying to do good. And so King's quote switches that conversation and say it's not about people who have goodwill. It's actually about understanding the underlying issues that are being manifest in the problem that you're discussing. So more so talking about the systemic issues. Exactly, yeah. Okay, so what can be done to tip the scale of inequity and establish a more equal opportunity among engineering education? So I feel like one of the things we have to understand is the role of race and racism in the United States in particular and uh, anti-blackness more bro uh, broadly. Um, or even anti-blackness in this country, but black institutions have been supporting black students for a long time and doing that well. And so one of the things that would change that is to give them the resources that they are due, right? They, you know, things like the 1890, I think, Moral Act was supposed to provide resources to black institutions for engineering programs, but those resources have never equally been distributed. And so, you know, restoring those type of things, one step to get us where we need to be. So bringing that into everything you're doing here at ASWE, how would you summarize the impact and importance of ASWE? I would say it's a platform that allows us to have these conversations. Um, in traditional engineering, uh, like the civil and mechanicals, they focus more on the technical conversations of content, but this gives us a space to talk about the more educational implications around how we're teaching and what the content is. Okay, and is there anything else that you'd like to add? Continue to do the work that you've been doing for your career, and we don't need you to try to build a career in diversity, equity, and inclusion. We don't need you to add this as like a sprinkle on ice cream. Just stay in your lane and allow those who want to frame the work around this, you know, to, to do that. Or, or, you know, follow them as opposed to trying to uh, have them solve your problems. James, thank you so much for joining us today.